This video was produced by Virginia View, a consortium dedicated to promoting remote sensing outreach, education, and research through funding by the America View Consortium. This video was developed in partnership with the Virginia Geospatial Extension Program and GeoTED UAS. Its contents are solely the responsibility of the authors and do not necessarily represent the official views of America View, the USGS, or other partners. The mention of trade names or commercial products does not constitute their endorsement. In the prior chapter, we created training samples for each informational class we designed in Chapter 21. The effectiveness of these training samples must be evaluated. Spectral values for each class should be independent of one another with no overlap. Represent the full range of spectral values for a specific class. Not be overtrained. Too many similar training examples will replicate information rather than depict variability within the class. Represent a normal distribution of values as best possible and not contain pixels that are positioned at the edges of land cover boundaries or tracks to reduce the likelihood of mixed pixels, which can occur with mixed land uses. In this chapter, we learn how to use histograms, scatter plots, and statistics to evaluate normality, separability, and partitioning of training data. We begin with the 11-band composite Landsat 8 image, subset to the extent of the map viewer created in chapter 15, and the training samples created in the last chapter. We'll also be creating an additional training sample shape file and additional subset images for each of the training sample informational classes. Begin by adding the training sample shape file from the last chapter to the map project. Like any polygon shape file, the default symbology is single symbol, so you'll have to change its symbology to unique values and set the classification color scheme to match our informational classes. Now let's load your schema and training samples from the last chapter. Select the composite image, open the imagery, classification tools, training samples manager, and load your schema and training samples. Let's begin evaluating the training samples. Go to the Raster Layer tab, choose Data, and Create Chart. Of the three options, we'll begin with Spectral Profile. For ease of use, pin both the Chart Properties and Image Classification dialog boxes where you can best see them. We'll be switching back and forth. Let's first evaluate the Urban Informational class. In the previous chapter, we created several training samples for the urban class. In Chart Properties, choose the Feature Selector icon. This tool selects pixel values of all bands within the boundaries of that training sample and then graphs them. To ensure we are selecting the sample we're interested in, activate the Training Samples Manager by clicking on the Image Classification dialog box title. Now we know which training sample to select for graphing in Chart Properties. Select it in the Map Viewer. This graphs the spectral values of the pixels captured in the training samples on the y-axis for each band on the x-axis in the composite image. The graph indicates where multiple training samples for an informational class cover the same or a range of spectral values. If more than one training sample covers the same spectral values, we can eliminate one by deleting it or merging it with another training sample. We'll evaluate each informational class separately. This graph does not appear to be associated with a wide range of values, but let's take a closer look by expanding the graph. Now we can see the range of spectral values for each band for this one training sample. Let's add the second urban training sample in order to conduct a comparison. In the Image Classification Training Samples Manager, be sure that the Feature Selector icon is still enabled in Chart Properties and select the second urban sample. Then select the highlighted sample in the Map Viewer to add it to the Spectral Profile graph. As you can see, the profiles for these two training samples are very similar. Continue to add urban training samples and evaluate each profile. If two are exactly the same, then those two samples should be combined. Be careful, though, when merging training samples, some spectral values could be lost if they're dissimilar in any way. 
Also, merging creates a new median, so values at the extreme may be lost. Here we've added all of the urban samples. Since there are so few, you can easily determine the difference between them, but you can change the individual line colors to help with your spectral evaluation, and turn on and off the individual spectral profiles to compare among them. For the urban class, I'm going to leave my samples as is. You may make a different decision depending on how your graphs appear, the specific training samples you chose, and your evaluation. Depending on what areas you trained, the graph will have a different look, and you may need to make different decisions. So now let's evaluate the water category. First close the urban graph and repeat what we did for the urban class. In raster layer, data, create chart, choose spectral profile. In chart properties, click on the feature selector icon, go to the image classification training sample manager, and select the first water sample to highlight it in the map viewer, then select it in the map. As expected, the spectral profile of water is very different from the urban spectral profiles. Recall from prior chapters that spectral signatures should vary for different features. Be sure to reference the Landsat 8 band sensitivities table that's included at the end of this chapter of your text. Go ahead and add each training sample, evaluating each sample, and comparing the samples to each other. The water training samples show very few differences in spectral values between them, so we're going to combine them all into one sample to increase processing efficiency. In the Training Sample Manager, control-click each of the water samples to select them all. Now select the Collapse icon, which collapses or merges all of the water training samples into one. This new training sample must be saved. Be sure to save it as a new file with a new name so the original training sample is retained if needed. Now continue with the evaluation of training samples for the forest class. In this graph of the forest spectral values, notice there's a wide range of spectral values for forest in band 5. Recall that band 5 is in the near infrared, and that vegetation has a greater range of spectral signatures in the near infrared. Here we could merge some of the samples that are very close together. Now let's look at the agriculture graph. Notice that our agriculture samples contain spectral values that vary a bit. Agriculture spectral values vary over many difference bands relative to the samples from other informational classes. This concludes the first analysis, demonstrating how to evaluate the training samples to eliminate any significant overlap in spectral values. Leaving overlap will not affect the results, but it can slow down the classification process. As an analyst becomes more knowledgeable and expert in the classification process, the number of training samples with overlapping spectral values will decrease. Let's move on to the next analysis, evaluating separability using scatter plots.